Wow. So I was reflecting back on four years ago, and you know, in some ways it feels like we were just here yesterday. Uh, in other words, in other ways, man, uh, the entire world has flipped upside down a few times since, since we were all together here. Uh, but it feels good, and it's great to see all of you here. You know, at the start of this year, with the pandemic still raging, we weren't sure that we were even going to be on the ballot. I always envisioned us getting back to this point, but nothing was guaranteed earlier this year. It took a monumental lift by many dedicated volunteers just to give us a fighting chance. And together we collected more than double the amount of signatures required to get on the ballot. You know, a lot of people, including the party establishment, tried to write off 2017 as a flash in the pan. It wasn't. We once again proved that a broad, diverse coalition that puts people over politics and consistently chooses to rise above can win. Syracuse, Syracuse, you picked optimism and hope for the future of this great city. You rejected the division that has infected politics elsewhere and has held us back here for far too long. And you chose working together to solve the challenges we face. So tonight, the grand experiment I spoke of on this night four years ago, to test whether or not we could set aside politics and work together to make policy that improves the lives of our city residents to test whether we could shed our decades-old pessimism and affinity for the status quo and instead embrace the innovative, big-thinking, risk-taking, and progressive approach that defines the great cities of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, that experiment is working and is becoming a model that others will follow. There are so many people that I want to thank tonight that made this victory possible. I can't name them all, but I'm going to acknowledge some of our amazing rock stars that we have on our team. First, I want to acknowledge the amazing people of Syracuse City Government. We have the best employees in the nation, and it is their work and dedication that is driving our city's resurgence. I appreciate all that you do and know that I could not be here right now without all of you. I stand on your shoulders. For the campaign, we had a tireless and generous group of volunteers and supporters, more than I can name, but I want to acknowledge a few. On the petition, petitioning and canvassing front, our ground game was strong led by people like Ed Nano, Kathleen Gleason, John Black, Michael Collins, Ryan Miller, Tim O'Donnell, a.k.a. the chairman, Jim and Dee Dee Walsh, a.k.a. my parents, <laughs> and our brothers and sisters in labor, including Monica Williams and her crew from SEIU, Mitch Latimer from the Carpenters, and Nick Butchko from IBEW. Thank you all for... <laughs> there they're testing me with this glass here. I, got it. Uh, I want to also thank everyone that supported or hosted an event, including Stephanie Crockett and Matt Reed, Dominic and Janelle Robinson, Joe Bryant and Danny Clam, John and Meg Tanzarita, Laura Cueva, Calvin Corridors, Kathy Racido, Maureen McCarthy, Tracy, Guy Hart, Darren Price, Ed and Pam Levine and Sharon Washington, to name just a few. Thank you all so much. I want to thank my amazing crew. And when I say crew, it's actually an acronym. It stands for Committee to Reelect Walsh. Um, they have spent way too much time, more time than they have, at our campaign headquarters over the past number of months. Uh, they are 
in alphabetical order. La last name first. Ruth Neon Gron, Stephanie Crockett, Rich Angle, Christy F Frame, Barry Lentz, Mike Lashon, Greg Lowe, Rebecca McDonald, Kathy Murphy, Sharon Owens, Matt Reed, John Sorotnik, Rob Simpson, and again, Jim and Dee Walsh. Thank you all. I want to recognize my campaign manager. Where is he? For, for those of you that don't know Eric Knighton, he is one cool operator. He, he, as he tells us, he operates on one speed, one level. And for a campaign manager, you really can't ask for anything more. There are times when I was ready to fly out of my seat and he's just sitting there. We're good. We got it. <laughs> now I know that you were right. We got it. <laughs> Wasn't always so sure. But, uh, you know, what I love about our team, both four years ago and today, uh, we have so many people that have not been involved in politics. How many, how many campaigns had you run before this one, Eric? Yeah, zero. Um, but we bring together amazing, talented people uh, that know this community and know what, know what to do uh, when they bring good people together. And again, Eric, congratulations. You did an awesome job. All right, you've been listening live to the victory speech of Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh, easily cruising to his second term. And his challenger, Khalid Bey, also just spoke, Jeff. He did, and he uh, conceded the race as well in congratulating the mayor. Let's hear what he had to say just a short time ago. I already called him and congratulated him on his victory. And ultimately, uh, we get back to work tomorrow. We still have work to do. Uh, I'm in the remaining time of my time on the council. Uh, certainly appreciate it, and I'll give my uh, uh, peace and salutations to my colleagues late December, uh, later, you know, but otherwise, uh, I want to express my appreciation to my campaign team who worked very hard. Khalid Bay conceding tonight, the Democrat saying he tried his best and uh, not disappointed in uh, what he was able to get out as far as his message. But this was a three-way race, Jeff. It, it was. Um, uh, Madison Moore has been live tonight at uh, Janet Berman's camp. She joins us now. Um, Madison, you heard from the Republican candidate in this race, a, a distant third there, um, who just conceded uh, as well. What did she have to say? I imagine a lot of disappointment. Well, Jeff and Christy, it is obviously not the outcome that Republican candidate Janet Berman was hoping for, but she is just so grateful for this experience and everything that she's learned along the way, the people that she's met. And just moments ago, she called Mayor Ben Walsh to concede, and this is what she had to say. All right, I just got off the phone with Mayor Ben Walsh, and I congratulated him on his success in the, in the election. And I want to thank everybody who has supported me, starting with my family, uh, and uh, family here and family in Indiana and around the rest of the country, all of my fellow running mates. Uh, it, was, it was great to take this on with a really impressive team of candidates pursuing offices in the city. Woody And Berman said that she's not going to stop fighting for the issues that matter to her, using her platforms in many local charitable organizations that she's a part of to work on public safety and poverty. And she did say that she will probably not run again for political office, but it has been fun while it lasted. Live from the Berman headquarters, Madison Moore. New